Hey guys, so I wanted to film this special episode today because I'm going to be fulfilling an order that I just had to show you guys. Now, it's basically an order that came through Garmio.com for a crazy cool sorority crossing jacket that's covered in all sorts of designs and applique work. Now, if you don't know what Garmio is, I'll explain it in more details in just a little bit, but it's basically a service that allows you to place a custom order and then vendors with either embroidery or printing equipment uh, get routed those orders and get to fulfilling them. So this request here, uh, it came in a couple of days ago and I just decided to reach out to the client to get a little bit more information uh, on what they, they actually wanted. And with a little back and forth uh, to get the details just right, uh, we ended up ordering the jackets uh, and they should be arriving tomorrow morning. Now on a quick side note, if you guys are watching this video and you wanna make a custom order for yourself, you can visit Garmio.com and use a custom editor to create your own design. Or if you want the pros to handle it, you could simply use the contact form that I've linked in the description below and uh, let the Garmio's team help you out with your order. Now before I get to start fulfilling this order, you guys already know the deal, make sure to give this episode a thumbs up and follow our channel so that I can keep showing you awesome content just like this. Now it's time for me to go home and I'll see you tomorrow morning and hopefully those jackets arrive. Bye. Good morning guys, before I get started with anything, I want you guys to check out this order so that you can see what goes into making a one-of-a-kind sorority or fraternity crossing jacket. If you've never heard of a sorority crossing jacket before, it falls under the Greek gear niche, which is also referred to as a Greek line jacket. Now these types of jackets are typically covered in all kinds of embellishments on the front, the sleeves, the back, and even the lower back of the jacket, and represents a member's Greek organization class, nickname, and line. Because of the complexity of these jackets, they tend to be very profitable for custom apparel businesses, especially embroiderers. As you know, the more complex and custom an order is, the more that you could actually charge for them. For example, the jackets that I'm gonna be working with today not only have embroidery on the front, sides and back, but also utilize different styles of embroidery like applique and even metallic threads, which you know can be trickier to work with because of how fine the threads are. All of these things make this order unique and very hard to replicate for mass production. With all that being said, if you get an order like this, you need to be prepared for how to price it so you don't sell yourself short. In fact, I've actually linked an embroidery pricing video in the description below and also in the cards above that you can watch that goes over how to take your time into account when pricing, which is especially important for more complicated orders. All right guys, so with all that being said, I'm gonna go inside and get a little cozy and we're gonna be going over the profit potential for this project. Come on, follow me. All right guys, so to give you an idea how much you can make for one of these jackets, these jackets I found them on online for $23 each and for the shipping, I spent $11. Now obviously, if you purchase multiple of them, it's probably gonna be maybe a dollar or so more. So let's just round this out to $35 for just one jacket. Now, here's the good part. These jackets run anywhere from $90 for a basic version, all the way up to $180, which is the one that I will be doing on this project just because it has more intricate designs and a lot more things going on, right? So this is $145 profit, all right? And that means that you have a profit margin of 80%. Now with all that being said, let's just say that this project is not for beginners, but I'll be linking some related videos for you guys, either on the cards above or in the description below, so keep an eye out for them. All right, so now let's go ahead and walk over to my design so I can show you exactly what my train of thought was when I was doing this, come on. All right, so now let's go over the order that I'm going to be embroidering these designs onto these jackets. The first one that I wanna knock out is going to be the back designs because they're the ones that take the longest. Now, since I'm using the sash frame for those two designs in the back, I'm going to leave it in the machine and keep using it so I don't have to waste time to go back and use it again afterwards. Now, after I'm done with those, the next ones that I'm going to be doing would be the name in the back, then the right crest logo, and finally, 
the shoulders. And I'm going to be using just the Mighty Hoops and obviously I'm going to be using different size because they need to be different size so that the design can fit in there. So now that we discuss the process that I'm going to be embroidering these designs, let's move over to the threads that I'm going to be using for this project. Now, they specifically asked me to use metallic threads. So you know what that means? I will have to loosen my tensions and I will have to bring down the density on certain parts of designs that are going to be using these metallic threads. Not only that, we're probably gonna have to slow down our speeds a little bit. Okay, so now that you understand the scope of this project, I'm going to show you exactly how I digitize these designs and go over some of the tests that I already ran on backing so that you can get a feel for the process that goes into the testing phase. Then, I'm actually going to be embroidering on the jacket, so wish me some luck. But like I promised, let's go upstairs and show you the digitizing process using my Chroma digitizing software. And if you want to have a free trial, you can scroll down to the description below and you can get it from there. All right, come on, let's go. All right, guys, so now we're ready to go over through our software and see kind of uh, what I went through when I was digitizing these, which one gave me the most issues and which one were pretty simple. So let's start off with the most difficult one. Uh, and I'll start off with the right crest logo. So if we see in here, we're gonna see the first thing is the black, as you can see. But the most difficult part about this design here was actually the small letterings and the small uh, details around um, certain parts of the crest itself. So if we zoom in here, the hardest part that I would say for me was over on these little letters on the crown. To be able to make these letters readable, you would need to use a run stitch instead of the classic satin stitches that most of your letters have. But not only that, if we look over onto the candles and onto uh, this diamond here, all of these have a black border. So let's go ahead and zoom out over here and move over to what I actually digitized and show you exactly what I did here. So for the candles, I use just a regular run stitch. Now, a lot of these are gonna be very similar. So let's go over to the run stitch itself. Let's click on it. And the type of run stitch that I use was a bean stitch. And I uh, made the length to 1.0 millimeters, all right? So the reason why I use the bean stitch is because it does go over the same exact area multiple times. So in this case, I set my bean repeat stitch to be at three. So basically it'll go over the same area three times, right? So I did use a triple rope actually on one part of the crown, which is this one over here that goes across. Now for this, I want it to look a little thicker than the border itself. So that's why I use a triple rope for this one. Uh, if I would have used a double rope, then you would only see one zigzag and then the straight center stitch. Now, for these letters, I did something very similar to it, but instead of using a run stitch, I used a manual stitch. So for these letters here, I went down to my manual stitch, and when you use a manual stitch, every stitch that you use will be that one stitch. It will not act like a uh, run stitch where it adds uh, stitches automatically in between. So let me show you the difference. So I went over to the manual stitch and I created my lines one at a time. So I would select this one first, then I would select the other line, for example, on the K, and then the third line. And that's how I created this. And I did the same thing for all those three letters. So remember, when you're creating very small letters like these, I would say about three millimeters in height, you would probably want to go this route. All right, so now that we know what was difficult with this design, let's move on to the next one. So as you can see here, we have a mix of layers. Now, you can see how there's mainly three layers. There is the one that's under the applique, then comes the applique, which is the numbers. And after that, we have more embroidery on top of the applique. Now, the reason why this part is so difficult is because originally you would want to re-hoop your garment three different times since it has three different layers. I really wanted to just hoop it once and have the design completed. And that is it. Now, the problem with that 
is that since those layers are so close to each other, they cannot look like they're overlapping each other because then you can see that it's overlapping. It doesn't look like it's in the back. It actually looks like it's coming to the front. So what I had to do was first create it and get the lines to be very close together. And then afterwards, I would test the design to see how it came out and how far apart, because remember the stitches will pull against each other. So if we zoom in over here, you can see how this layer, it's supposed to be in the back. But if we zoom in, it actually looks like it's overlapping the border by just a little bit. Now, what happens here is that the satin stitch will shrink and then this line will really end up being over here afterwards, like that. So you wouldn't tell because it'll land right on the edge. And that's exactly what you want it to do. So I ran it multiple times until I got it right. Now I didn't do the full design each and every time. I was trying to get just pieces of it and testing those pieces. And with that and the settings that I input, I kind of copied that over to the rest of it. And then I ran one full test and it came out exactly how I needed it to come out. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. Let's go down to the testing room and see how the test came out. Let's go. So as we say time and time again, embroidery is not plug and play, meaning that there is a lot that goes into these projects behind the scenes, including digitizing, testing for the digitizing, digitizing again, and testing again for the digitizing to make sure that the designs come out right before you tend to embroider them on the final garment. You don't want to make the mistake of ruining the garment, especially if it's the one that the customer sent out to you, or else you might end up having to reimburse them for the damages. So as a precaution, I did some testing of my own, and let's go ahead and zoom in here so I can really tell you what's going on. So I started off with uh, the left chest logo, which is the three vertical letters, and the reason why is because there is three different layers in there. Now I wanted to go and do something different that wouldn't take me so long, which is hooping it at once and doing everything in the same hoop so I don't have any registration loss and having to re-hoop also takes a long time. So I said, let me go a different route about this. So what I decided to do is to first do the applique and then after do the embroidery on top. But the back piece layers that look like they're actually embroidered behind them, I actually put them very close to the edge so that it looks that way so I don't have to hoop it more than once. Now for the horizontal letters, I started off with the gold one, which came out perfect on the first run. But once I did the other one, there was a little bit of a difference because you have more letters. So the actual design itself actually shrunk a little bit on the Y axis. So what I had to do was stretch it out. And not only that, I also had to fix the inside because on the R and the A's, I didn't want the red to show. So I wanted to have a hole in there. So I ended up adding that one after I ran my first test. Now for the crest that's gonna go on the right chest of the jacket, after I did it, I noticed that I used the same stabilizer, which is a cutaway stabilizer, and that is white. And obviously the jacket's not gonna be white, so it's gonna be black. So if I put the wings in black and the jacket is black, you really wouldn't tell a difference. But not only that, that it really took a long time because of all those fill stitches. So on the second test, I ended up changing the border to white so you could actually see the wings and I took away the fill stitches so it could be faster and you still wouldn't even be able to notice because either way, black stitches on a black background, you wouldn't really know that it's there. Now moving on to the back pieces, the first one came out really good. The only thing that I didn't uh, really like was the size. I was going to be using a uh, Mighty Hoop and the size that I have, it's not as big as I wanted it to be. So I ended up changing my idea and moving over to uh, the sash frame and using the sash frame instead so I can have more space for this design. All right, so with all that being said and all the testing that I've done, I am very confident that these designs are ready to be embroidered onto the actual jacket. So the customer needs this as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and move over to the embroidery area so we can get this done and get it shipped out by the end of the day. Let's go. All right guys, so now let's go over the materials that I'm going to be using for this project. The first thing I have is my jacket. Next to that, I have my stabilizer, which is a cutaway stabilizer. Then I have my fabric, which is white and red twill. 
And here I have my scissors. I have two different pairs of scissors, just one for regular cutting and the other one to get up and close when I'm doing the applique. And here I have my hoops. I'm going to be using four different hoops. I'm using the sash frame since it's the biggest one for the back piece. Then I'm gonna be using the 11 by 13 magnetic hoop, which I'm going to only use for the name that's also going in the back. After that, I'm using the white magnetic hoop, which is an eight by nine. And this one I'm only going to be using for the right chest logo. And lastly, I have the little hoop, which is a five by five magnetic hoop. And that one I'm going to be using for the shoulders. All right, well, no time to waste. I am ready to start getting into action. So let's begin by hooping the back piece of the jacket. Come on. All right guys, so today I'm going to be using the Ricoma MT-2001. This is a 20 needle machine and it runs up to 1,200 stitches a minute. So if you guys wanna learn more about this machine, you can scroll down to the description below. There's a link there that will guide you to our virtual shop and also some videos. So I'm using this machine today because I ran all of my tests on this exact machine. Now when you're doing your testing, it's very important that you use the exact same machine because you obviously have to adjust your tensions, you have to make sure that you're using the right uh, color of threads, and pretty much just a lot of little things that go in it that you wanna make sure you stick with the same machine so that nothing goes wrong. All right guys, so without further ado, we are ready to go. My first jacket is already hooped, and if you wanna learn how to hoop jackets or even polos or anything else, you can click on the uh, tab above. All right, let's go. All right guys, so we're ready for our first applique. I have my tool already pre-cut, so let's go ahead and put it on top of the jacket here. Nice and flat, and just press start. All right, so the first part of the applique is completed. Now I'm gonna use this small scissor and I'm going to try to get as close as I possibly can to the edge. So check this out.
jackets are looking good, if I may say so myself. All right, guys, I highly recommend if you haven't considered this type of niche before that you reach out to your Greek organizations near you. Just imagine getting orders like this from new pledges every semester. With orders like these, you could run an entire business that just focuses on low volume, but highly customized orders because of the profit margin alone. That way, you don't have to worry as much on securing large bulk orders to meet your goals. Now you saw me using just one single head embroidery machine for these jackets today, but ideally for these type of orders, you'll want to consider multiple single head machines as you scale your business because each order will be different. In fact, I've linked the video in the description below and in the cards above that goes over the pros and cons of having multiple single head versus a multi head and what projects would be better suited for each one. Now it's time for what you've really been waiting for, which is the big reveal. Let's check out these jackets, come on. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching me make these one-of-a-kind jackets and learning about all the tips and tricks along the way. If you're interested in getting a machine to make items like these and much more, go to the link down below and get in touch with a product specialist. If you're looking for some custom items for yourself or even for your company and want someone to customize them for you, make sure to check out Garmio.com or go down to the link below to speak with someone so that they can understand the specs that you need. As always, make sure to like this video and follow our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook on our group Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery as well as on Instagram for more great content just like this. Alright guys, until next time.